the output of this particular code you can check here the variable 1 is declared as an integer and the value is 5 here right so we have variable 1 with value 5 then one more variable is given that is variable 2 and the value is 6 so var1 and var2 are the variables of integer type with value 5 and 6 one more boolean type of variable is there so when the data type is boolean we can expect two types of values here for b either it will be true or it will be false and this expression is important to identify the output b is equals to see the not operator is utilized here so whatever is the result of this parenthesis will be reversed right so what is the var1 value that is 5 greater than var2 is 6 so 5 greater than 6 is actually going to give me false results but due to this not operator it will be reversed to true so b is going to hold true value and here we are directly printing the value of b right so the output for this will be option right see you have to properly understand the given expressions and then you can finalize your answer right let's move on to the next question see consider the following tree and what will be the pre-order traversal now whenever it comes to the tree traversal there are three types of traversals on the basis of that you can identify the sequence first one is in order traversal where the left child then root element and then right child this will be the sequence of traversal in the post order the root will be at last right so left child then right child and then root and in the pre order the root will be at first so root then left child and then right child and what they have asked in the question about us with the pre order traversal so we will start from the root of the tree so what is the root of the tree that is a right after that we will traverse to the left part and again in that left subtree we will follow the same sequence of root left and right so after a you will be getting b then d right then moving towards the right hand part that is e and h right once you complete the left subtree then move on to the right subtree because root we have already covered then left we have covered and the right again in the right subtree you will follow the same sequence of root left and right so c is my root then left part I will complete first so F and I and then right will be G so this will be the pre-order traversal sequence now which option is matching with this option C now you can save the time for such kind of options where only one option starting with A so by itself it gives the answer but if you have common type of options you have to solve like this right so option C is the correct answer for this question now the next question again the code snippet is given for C language and you have to identify the output of that so what will be the output of this particular code snippet so array is given with three elements here right so suppose if I draw the structure for array with three elements and the index variable values so 1 2 3 are my actual elements and array index starts from 0 so 0 1 and 2 right and what they are printing here percent D 2a at C so if you understand the concepts of arrays properly you will come to know that when I am writing 2 of a it is exactly equals equivalent 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 to a of 2 right so writing a of 2 is equivalent to 2 of a now we can easily identify a of 2 means the index position 2 we are expecting here so what is the element which is present at a of 2 3 is the element so 3 will be printed here right so the output of this will be option C 3 right so here here itself the logic lies here 2 of A or 1 of A is there suppose so it, it can be A of 1 like this so detail idea about the array processing will help you to solve these questions then in the next question this is related to the DBMS now in uh, previous examinations they haven't asked the questions related to the DBMS but recently they have covered some sessions on SQLs and all so we are predicting actually that they will ask some questions so let's have a practice for such questions also the value of recently generated sequence number can be obtained by right now this is uh, a theoretical stuff related to the part so recently generated sequence can be obtained by the functionality letter this is last insert ID 
when you utilize this functionality last insert id you will get the recently generated sequence number right the value of that respect to number so option a is the correct answer here apart from that latest insert initial insert and insert id are incorrect options okay move on to the next question see sql server has how many types of views mainly how many how many types of views here so there are two types of views actually two types of views in sql server first one is system defined view or system view you can say and second one is user defined view so in this uh, way or in this types you can generate the sql views system view and user defined view again the theoretical stuff related to the sql server will help you to solve this question so answer is two there are two types of views in sql server first one is system defined view and second one is user defined view now in this question predict the output java coding statement is given here the code snippet the execution will start from the main we have again one variable right variable 1 var 1 whose value is 5 and we have another var 2 whose value is 6 okay now what they have checked in the if condition see now multiple operators simultaneously has been assessed so left hand side part and which is equivalent to right hand side part so assignment operator and comparison operator both are utilized in the same expression right so first according to the precedence part we we'll let us solve the parenthesis first so when i say var 2 is equals to 1 so what exactly you are doing you are assigning the right hand side value to var2 so due to this statement my var2 will get modified okay and var2 will become 1 so this 6 will be overwritten and the value of 6 will be overwritten by 1 due to this statement after that i am comparing it so 1 equals to equals to var1 var1 is 5 so this uh, this turns out to be false actually right so this will be false so if condition is false so it will pass my control to the else block so i will go and execute the else block statement now in the else block statement they have utilized pre increment operator for var2 but it is a single expression it is a single expression so what is the value of var2 recently we got it as 1 and due to this pre increment plus plus var2 it will be modified to 2 right 1 will be modified to 2 because it is a separate expression so totally it will be executed if suppose here instead of plus plus var2 if it is like this var2 plus plus then we will be considering the recent value of var1 that will be printed and in the memory it will get updated but because of the pre increment the total expression will be executed and the output will be 2 here right and in this case the output will be 1 the recent value will be printed first but in the memory it will be modified so make sure you identify the proper operation that is happening here and according to that you select your answer right so option c is the correct answer for this moving towards the next question this is related to the networks computer networks which one is not a type of topology they have asked about the networks topologies right network topologies are there various kinds of types of network topologies are there like bus ring right we have bus topology we have ring topology then we have a uh, star topology hybrid is also there then mesh topology is also there right so all these are the different types of network topologies out of this there is no such terminology like a circuit topology no such kind of topology is there and they have asked which is not a type of topology right so option c is the correct answer here circuit topology is not a type of topology in the networks right now in this question which of the following option best suits for the memory leak occurred now when you assign an reference to the pointer over here address and you utilize it in terms of dynamic memory allocation right suppose dma and after utilization of that memory if you don't free that memory right you have allocated it dynamically actually but once your task is complete as a good sign of programmer you should free that but if you don't do that then the memory leak will occur so which particular statement best suited for this read one by one resource allocation pending while debugging the code now this is not related to the uh, dynamic allocation because we don't have any kind of pending allocations program will releases the resources allocated in the memory if it releases the resources then there will not be any memory leak so this is also not the option 
प्रोग्राम डज नॉट फ्री द मेमरी विच इज अलोकेटेड डायनेमिकली दैट्स वॉट वी आर लुकिंग फॉर मेमरी लीक बिकॉज अलोकेशन ऑफ द मेमरी हैज बीन डन बट यू डिडेंट फ्री दोज रिसोर्सेज आफ्टर यूर टास्क इज कम्प्लीटेड राइट सो दिस इज द करेक्ट वन एंड ऑकर्स मेमरी लीक ऑकर्स ड्यू टू द एड्रेस असाइनमेंट फेल्यूर नो बट बिकॉज इफ एड्रेस असाइनमेंट फेल्यूर हैपन्स देन देर विल नॉट बी एनी मेमरी असाइनमेंट सो लीकेज विल नॉट बी देर राइट सो ऑप्शन थ्री is the correct answer for this particular question that when your program does not free the memory which is allocated dynamically in that case the memory leak will occur and once you try this multiple times then the space allocated to that respective program will get full and further on it will not allow you to do that so as a better good sign of a programmer that whenever you take a dynamic memory allocation in your programming part then make sure that you are freeing that memory once your task is also completed right so option 3 is correct here moving towards the next question see so what is given here what will be the output of this code snippet header file and the, yeah this is pre processor directive that is given to us so as we know that pre processor directives are going to replace whatever the structure defined you have done in the actual syntax right so square of x is been replaced with x multiply by x now let's check in the main functionality we have a variable i which is equals to 64 divided by square of 4 so value of x is given here so it will be replaced with 4 multiply by 4 4 multiply by 4 now see here now most of the students can make mistake over here that if you replace this square of x 4 multiply by 4 and directly with 16 right then it will give you different results but as it is directly mentioned over here as a directive it is x multiply by x so value of x is 4 here according to this pass right so 4 multiply by 4 when you write down the expression like this then the precedence comes into the picture and as we know that uh, division part is having higher precedence right so you can solve this like this 64 by 4 right and then multiply by 4 understood and now your answer will be 64 right so correct answer is option b here but if you directly take it as 16 64 by 16 then it will be 4 which is a wrong answer because of that precedence it is changing the entire sequence of execution and the answer as well so 64 is the correct answer option b so make sure that exact definition of the pre processor directive what is provided you have to replace it as it is don't modify it according to the processing replace it and then further operations will happen according to the sequence precedence whatever it is okay then moving towards the next question the last one which of the following is the most important phases of sdlc now sdlc is software development life cycle right this comes out to be in the part of software engineering this is important because uh, in previous year questions also they have asked questions related to the software development life cycles so there are phases mainly requirement analysis phase that is the starting phase of sdlc after that you have design phase then you have coding phase or development as well then you have testing phase and then at last you have maintenance and deployment both together maintenance and deployment right now the question is that out of all these phases which one is more important now to solve this question you need to first understand the working of all these phases and then you can decide which one is more important now according to the development life cycle every software goes through this life cycle phases for their entire development so first task is to analyze the requirements of that software so you will have uh, client meetings you will have surveys you will have collection of information related to that problem statement or software and on the basis of collective information what you have whatever is required you take that information and then on the basis of that information you move on to the design phase so the output of requirement analysis is actually acting as a input for design and this same sequence is followed for other process also that output of design will be input for coding output of coding will be for input for testing and then further deployment will happen it means that if i miss any one of the phase properly implementation of that phase properly then the problems or failures will move on to the next phases propagation will happen so it starts from analysis itself if you are not properly doing the analysis of the entire software requirements then automatically the design will be wrong then coding will be wrong and the testing also 
means the important is here requirement analysis phase is the most important phase of the sdlc here itself you have to take care of everything properly and mostly the feasibility study also that is also important aspect when you are performing the requirement analysis here itself you will decide whether the software or the project what you are working on is feasible or not so that's why the more important phase is requirement analysis so option a is the correct answer for this respective question right so i hope you got all the answers properly and understanding of the same thank you for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe our channel